Hello students, a very warm welcome to our ecology classes today. The topic for today's discussion is soil erosion. Before we start, we'll first learn about soil. It is important first to know what is soil. Soil is defined as the layer of broken rock particles and dead and decaying organic matter on the surface of earth which is indispensable for sustenance of life. The sustenance of life encompasses both plants and animals. That means soil sustains both flora as well as fauna. It is derived from rocks and contains huge amount of biotic components. It also contains approximately 50% of mineral matter and 5% of organic matter involving living and dead organisms and decaying matters as well. The rest is composed of water and soil. So, it can well be said that soil in itself is an ecosystem comprising of biotic and abiotic components. Now, to start with, we'll talk about what is erosion first. If we consider the term from the perspective of earth science, we'll see that erosion is the action of surface processes that removes or displaces soil, rock or dissolved material from one point on the earth's surface or crust and then transport them and deposits the same to some other location. This term erosion should not be confused with weathering. Weathering is different. Weathering does not involve any movement whereas erosion does. See, this is an agent of erosion. It is water. You see, these droplets indicate water. Water detaches the layer of soil from here. So, it is detachment. Then, it is transported to some other place and finally deposited to a completely different location. Okay, so soil erosion is what? Displacement or removal of topsoil of the earth's surface. It involves detachment, transportation and deposition of soil particles. It is a continuous process and it's either very fast or slow. Now, we'll talk about the various agents of erosion. In this lecture, we will concentrate on two important agents. One is wind and the other is water. Apart from these two, these agents or these factors also contribute equally to soil erosion. They are overgrazing, overcropping, deforestation, construction activities and mining activities. So let's start with wind erosion. In wind erosion, from this picture itself, you can see that wind current is carrying along with it different sized particles of the soil. Okay, movement of soil particle depends on two parameters. What are they? One is the particle size and the other is strength of wind. If the particle is too large and heavy, then it is difficult for wind to displace it, to carry it along. On contrary, if it is small and very light, then it is very easy for the wind to carry it along. Again, when the wind is very strong or blowing at a great speed, what happens then? The wind is strong 
and it is more powerful it is capable of carrying huge amount of soil particles along with it it can even carry a little heavier particles also on contrary if it is gentle it will not be able to erode the soil or it will not be able to carry particles with it and displace the top layer now we'll talk about the various effects of this soil erosion by wind reduction in soil fertility due to loss of plant nutrients that are concentrated in the topmost layer of the soil or top soil nutrients are generally found concentrated in the top soil and if the top soil is getting blown away what will happen nothing remains in the soil the soil is rendered infertile this will not be able to support plants on it it will not be able to support life system any longer then coming to thinning of the cover thinning of the cover reduces soil's capacity to support plants now when the cover becomes very thin when the soil cover becomes very thin what happens it can no longer binds the it can no longer bind the roots of the plants and thus bind the soil particles together this will make way for easier displacement of the top soil the erosion of top soil can expose the underlying dense subsoil that are difficult to revegetate due to low permeability and their saline nature due to their salt content it is very difficult to revegetate the underlying dense clay soil okay now we'll move on to the process of soil erosion by wind the process involves suspension saltation and surface creep now let's start with suspension see in this process what happens tiny particles very tiny particles whose diameter is often uh, less than 0.1 mm in diameter whose diameter is often less okay then this also can be moved into the air by uh, saltation process it forms dust storms all right now very fine particles these fine particles are carried high into the air by wind and transported to great distances this is now we'll talk about saltation saltation occurs among medium sized soil particles whose uh, diameter range from 0.05 to 0.5 mm okay now these type of particles are pretty light okay they are quite light to be lifted off the surface but but are pretty large to become suspended these are light enough for being suspended uh, like carried or lifted from the surface but are not that light to remain suspended so what will happen they will be dropped somewhere so fine to medium size soil particles are lifted a short distance into the air and drop back to the soil surface damaging crops and dislodging more soil now when you throw something when you drop something on a surface what will it do it will dislodge the existing surface if it is not too hard what will happen the existing surface on which you are dropping the thing that surface will get, become damaged if you are dropping something on the crops what will happen the crops will get damaged then we'll come to surface creep now in wind erosion process what happens large particles which are even larger than those particles uh, associated to suspension and saltation large particles are rolled across the soil surface okay larger size soil particles that are too large to be lifted off the ground are dislodged by the wind and they roll along the soil surface all right it only uh, like move 
a few meters fine the abrasion that results from wind blown particles break down stable surfaces uh the breakdown stable surface aggregates and further increases soil erodibility they make the soil even more prone to erosion fine so this is all about soil erosion by wind now we'll talk about water erosion okay soil erosion by water high intensity and longer duration of rainstorm have high eroding potential they break down the soil aggregates and disperse the particles to distant places you have experiences yourself also when you water the potted plant at home too much when you put excess water to the plant what will you see the top layer of the flower pot becomes loose if you go on watering go on watering it will overflow right so high intensity and longer duration of rain storm have an eroding have a very high erosion causing potential they will do what they will break the soil aggregates and disperse the particles to other places what will happen they will carry the soil particles along with its flow lighter aggregate materials like silt fine sand clay or organic matter are easily detached and removed by splash of rain and run over soil movement by rainfall is generally highest and most noticeable during short duration high intensity thunderstorm that lasts for a short duration so soil movement by rainfall okay is highest when and it is most noticeable when it is during short duration high intensity thunderstorm if it is a uh, short duration one and if it is very intense you can notice this erosion or you can notice this soil movement so the soil movement is perceivable when when it is uh, short duration high intensity thunderstorm now see it occurs whenever there is excess water on a slope and it results in surface water runoff the water cannot be absorbed or trapped in the soil now when the water is not being trapped or is not being absorbed by the soil what will happen it will remain on the soil and it will start flowing soil compaction crusting or freezing increases the runoff due to reduced infiltration now when infiltration is there what will happen this problem will not occur when there is reduced infiltration what will happen soil compaction crusting or freezing uh increases the runoff this is due to uh reduced infiltration from this picture also you can see the water is gushing from somewhere and it is sweeping away the soil along with it the color has also changed what are the effects of soil erosion the various effects of soil erosion are listed below agriculture is heavily affected we all know this you must be knowing that any any devastating flood hampers agriculture to a great extent plants are soil is washed off and as a result what happens a uh, great number of huge number of plants are washed out as well seeds are displaced if you are planting seeds in one place and if that entire soil is washed away what will happen it will take away the seeds also along with it soil nutrients are lost whatever nutrient is there in the soil everything is getting washed away change in soil texture and ultimately that ultimately hampers the water holding capacity of the soil this again paves way for drought the soil texture itself also changes and this hampers this disturbs the water holding capacity of soil which is very important for sustenance of plant then coming to blockage of streams and drainage channels when a huge amount of soil is being carried along with water what will happen the drainage channels will become clogged and think of the 
aquatic organisms they need clean water for their life think of the fish the aquatic animals they can't uh, sustain their life in a dirty muddy water what will happen their gills will become clogged and they will die so blockage of streams drainage and is is very important along with the aquatic life that also is hampered to a great extent then coming to the last point pesticides transported pollute water bodies the pesticides also the pesticides that get transported along with the soil that also go and mix in the water bodies and pollute them so this is how we come to the end of our discussion before we end see we should know some of the control measures the best control measure for both for erosion is what you know is to increase plantation the more you plant the better it is the soil particles are tightly bound by the roots so if you go on increasing plantation if you go on increasing the number of plants on the substratum what will happen the soil particles will not become loose to achieve this you know you should also you should also have a control on grazing overgrazing also causes loosening of the soil why because if the animals graze too much overgrazing will lead to decrease in number of plants and when the plants are decreasing what will happen the roots are no longer available to bind the soil particles together okay so these points should be kept in mind for preventing erosion these are some of the controlling measures okay i hope this lecture has helped you understand soil erosion by wind and water if you have any confusion anywhere please feel free to contact me in the comment section thank you so much for your kind attention goodbye